Travel at low cost with the points and miles, credit card rewards, bring the smiles, many adventures, tales to be told, make and save money, the world will unfold. Fight the war on happiness, pick up the gold. Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast breaks the mold. You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world and next to no cost with credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Thanks for joining me for today's episode with TK Thomas Kim from the Myelnomics Podcast Network. We met in Las Vegas following an event hosted by Award Travel 101 in San Antonio, Texas. In this discussion, we chat about My Vegas games, cruise offers, getting started in miles and points, and how miles and points have improved our lives. Before today's episode, some quick announcements. I'll be speaking at multiple events in 2024, including the October Chicago Seminars event at the Holiday Inn in Elk Grove Village, and the Miles Points and Gambling event, ZorkFest, November 2024 in Las Vegas. Also, visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to RSVP for monthly Greater Philadelphia Travel Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. The next meetups are June 23rd and July 28th. The website udio, udio.com created the new podcast intro music. On with today's episode. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you, Justin. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be on your podcast. We met in San Antonio, then Las Vegas, and now we're here to record and chat more. Yeah, it was it was fun to actually meet you in person. You know, I think we've we've um, I, I've been following you kind of on Facebook and some other social media stuff, and really enjoyed a lot of your some of your kind of instructional videos. I mean, I don't think my uh, my Vegas uh, redemptions would be as good if if not for your uh, educational um, pointers, uh, that you've had out, out on, uh, YouTube and other places. Uh, and, um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting my, my wind slots gem so I can, I can maybe stay at a, at a, at the wind resort sometime soon. Oh, excellent. Good to hear that you could succeed. Some people are skeptical of the, my Vegas enterprise, but what are your thoughts on it after you've been doing it for some time now? I still find some value from, from the redemptions that are out there. I, I, you know, I still have regular to get, for instance, comp offers from, um, MGM, and a great way to kind of stack, right, is is kind of use some of the resort credits that you get either, you know, from the comp offers or even doing some of the food and beverage rates um, at MGM. And then leveraging uh, some of the the various restaurant redemptions that there are out there uh, on My Vegas, especially when you go to visit Vegas. Because, you know, you know those prices in those uh, strip restaurants are, are kind of out of whack. They're, they're pretty expensive. But, you know, doing the combination of getting resort credits from MGM and then layering on um, some my Vegas awards. I mean, that makes it very reasonable uh, to go out and dine uh, at a couple of these restaurants in the uh, in the MGM e- ecosystem, and and I, I think that's a great way to save some money when you're visiting Vegas. Yeah, you and I both had done the same, where we booked very low cash rates with Luxor or another property for maybe twenty or thirty a night, and no resort fee with the MGM status. Yep. And then my Vegas is giving a rebate in something like one hundred fifty dollars in free play, so it's like a negative net cost stay. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, when you layer the between the restaurant uh, redemptions and the free play redemptions, especially if you've got a two or three night um, paid stay at an MGM, uh, ideally with, you know, getting some other stuff on top of it, like like resort credits. I mean, it's suddenly, yeah, you can you can really be you, you're right. You can create kind of a negative cost environment, especially if you already have gold or above and cannot have to pay the uh, the resort fees at, at MGM. So I think it's a really good play. It's a really good way to I think leverage your or, or, or kind of make a, a Vegas vacation a lot cheaper um, because, you know, that that has become a much bigger uh, thing lately. You know, the lodging and food are, are, are suddenly much larger portions of your budget when, when you go out and visit Vegas. Yes. And last time with my friend Mandy, who is a past podcast guest, we split a lot of the food comps. So those 20 off of 40s, those BOGO buffets, other rewards on there. It's a lot of food. I've gone by myself with the 20 off of 40 and I was super, super full. It almost requires a, a little <laughs> bit of menu engineering. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're either, if either you are two people and you're trying to meet, meet like, okay, let me maximize this. Or if you're one person, you're like, okay, what do I, what can I order? So I'm not going to go crazy and, 
and have to take a bunch of leftovers yeah. that I'm not, I'm not going to eat. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, America really loves math where you might get like uh, an impossible burger and a salad. Yes. And, oh, it's at like 37.50 yep. and I have to get to 40. Oh, could you could you add some <laughs> jalapenos? Can you charge me for that? It was like one really strange time I remember where they brought the check and I guess they didn't uh, charge or they forgot about it or they were being nice. I said, oh, sorry, it has to be yes, the certain total yes. to get the discount. So they had to charge me for something after. Yep, I had that exact thing happen to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, what a week or two ago, because I was at—I think I was at Tap at Excalibur, and, and they, ooh, uh, twenty-five tw- off fifty, yeah. twenty-five off of fifty, and and I saw you had done like the two for something, the three for thirty-three. Eating, yeah, the three for thirty. But I I was there by myself, so I was like, you know, what, let me let me. What can I order? So I ordered some wings and like a salad, which just and and a soda, and that was like forty-seven fifty, and I had to think I'd spend fifty bucks. Or something, <laughs> so they were like, oh, let me charge you like we'll charge you from extra ranch dressing or something. I'm like, okay, ooh, sounds great. Yes. <laughs> um so yeah. so you always have to do that and and that ended up just being the right amount of food for me to eat too because you know it was it, it, the salad wasn't huge which is kind of a shame because i remember the salads being quite large but for whatever reason this time around it was it was not super huge um and then and just you know like a appetizer order of wings and and, and and unfortunately at the kind of inflated strip prices yeah that's nearly 50 dollars. Mm-hmm. so <laughs> Yes, and I'm using comps from the MGM MasterCard as I'm spending a lot on that to get the MGM Platinum status. I think it's a high goal, but many people can spend their way to gold or at least uh, combine that with play and some other shenanigans. But having a big comp balance and stacking with the My Vegas Rewards is really nice. You know, and and I, I always forget about using. I have some Express comps that I need to use as well, but I, you know, they seem to be very stingy about letting you use those for actually like room. Like whenever I go to the, the 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 MGM cage or the rewards desk or whatever, and and ask them, hey, can I just apply these toward my my room charges or whatever? They they seem to be very hesitant. Oh, do that on, when you're checking out. And I'm like, and I never actually want to go there because I'm always in a rush leaving for the airport or whatever. So I never get around to doing that, which I think they understand, which is why they probably yeah they do, do that, that on purpose. Yeah. yeah, I get there a little bit early, and with status, you get to skip the larger lines most yep. of the time. So that's a good way to do it. But they, they seem very reluctant to do it ahead of time. They, they, they want you to do it on checkout day or something. Yeah, always some terms and conditions, but we figure out the puzzle. We have fun. And you've been involved with Miles and Points for some time. What, what keeps you still involved and still doing this? Well, you know, it's it's definitely uh, my hobby. You know, I've, I've always enjoyed travel. I know everybody, most people do. I mean, it's an easy thing. You know, people, you know, you ask, oh, oh do you like to travel? And like about what, nine out of 10 people are like, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I continue to, to uh, be inspired to do stuff because you're number one, you know, you, you see what other people do and you're like, oh, that's cool. I would like to do that one day. And the other thing is you you end up meeting so many people like, like yourself, you know, you, you, um, uh, find uh, so many different like-minded people out there. And so I think the social aspect to miles and points is, is definitely um, one of the the key drivers to keeping me interested and wanting to continue to, to, you know, meet people and interact with them and, and travel. Um, and, I, and very much, I think meetups like that um, uh, award travel 101, which is where we, we met each other for the first time in, in San Antonio, that, that, that was probably, uh, one of the one a good example of one of those and, and maybe some of the meetups that you put together I know you do some local ones as well so both yes. great um, great times I think to meet other like-minded people that 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 are interested in travel interested in miles and points generation um, kind of interested in in kind of almost the gaming aspect right because you know this is very much a challenge a puzzle um, and I think people like trying to solve puzzles I think often Yes, I've I've played Dungeon, Dungeons and Dragons for a very long time, and it's like, oh, I could use this credit card at grocery stores and get a plus four on groceries. <laughs> so just trying to optimize, trying to. Min-max. It's like you've got your you've got your different cards in your hand, and you're like, oh, this is a plus four. This is yes. a multiplier over here. Got the yeah, you're right. It's like you it's your it's you're you're playing different rounds in a game. You're absolutely right. Yep, and don't forget to add that D4 for Bless as well. You know, you might have that retention <laughs> offer or <laughs> AU card or employee card, right? All kinds of stacking going on to get the maximum return. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, and, and that, I mean, life is kind of a game and, you know, uh, definitely travel hacking and miles and points is very much so, uh, you know, you you build up, you know, things in your inventory, um, different yeah. currencies, different you know, cards and, and you, you figure out when to use them just as you would in any kind of, I guess, game. Um, 
in many ways. So you're, you're, the, the, the analogy is very, very strong. And past podcast guest Darren said the answer to everything is more credit cards. So we're continuing <laughs> to go, continuing to apply. At this point, I have to wait in between applications. It's not yes. like I can just fire off 15 in the same day because I already have so many cards and issuers. Oh, you've applied for too many cards recently and all the different bank rules that we have to worry about. But yes, we're yes. still getting approved. We're still having success. And we haven't ruined our credit score, as some critics might think. You know, I I, th I think that people are very quick to give advice, you know, and, 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 and claim to be an expert on, on a number of different things. And, you know, I find that it's, it's kind of very facetious for people to kind of act like they know better than, than you, you know, a lot of things. And I think that's something that I, I, I kind of want to make a point out, especially for people who are starting out, you know, in, in miles and points is that, you know, I, I love looking at other people and bloggers and, and influencers and, and getting inspiration from them. But I, I, I'm very wary about taking advice from them. I, I'd say a lot of times, you know, chart your own path and, and and kind of make your own decisions about it. You're you're the best. You're the expert when it comes to your situation, and and what works for you. So, and, and the other part is, you know, I I would definitely experiment. You know, I would say, you know, the the, the you know, there's very few things I think um, that that you're going to run into uh, when you're doing miles and points and and travel hacking and these type of things where it, it's really dire situation for you. You know, most of the time, you, the worst case scenario is, oh, I only got one X on this, or I only got. You know, I didn't get the bonus I expected or I didn't, you know, the, you know, maybe I overpaid for something. If that's the worst case scenario, then I, I think most of the time, you know, I think your, your, your risks are pretty low. So, you know, feel free to try stuff. Yes. And you're on the Myelnomics podcast network, which we can promote a little bit later. But I know that the main show, they talk about the burrito rule that if something goes wrong by about four dollars, it's not the end of the world. Right. But look at exactly. all the other wins that we have. And we're certainly exactly. in it. We're in it for the long game. Like I talk yep. about blackjack and online gambling in many ways to mm -hmm. have an edge. And some people, oh, well, what if I lose today? What if I'm down this month? Well, we're in it for the long game that over the long run, things are going to work out as long as you're making the right decisions. Yep. I think I think you're allowed to have a bad day here or there, you know, um, as long as long as that's that's the exception and not the rule. Yes, looking at my bankroll because I'm keeping track of the blackjack sessions. And right now I'm a little bit below expectation. I'm about 1% down and expectations about a half percent, but I have to just keep playing and get that volume in. I'm confident I'm making the right decisions, so I'm just going to keep going and not get discouraged and just continue to be in control. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, you know, I, I find that that's one of the bigger problems, I think, is, is just not getting discouraged and, you know, understanding that there, there is, you know, um, you know, law of big numbers and, and such in play here. Because, you know, it's, it's easy to, to be very emotional about these type of things. You know, I, I find that, 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 that I, I probably suffer from that too. You know, it's like, it's hard to be sometimes dispassionate about, um, um, certain things and, and, and you're like, oh, I'm really dejected or I'm, I'm really discouraged, but you know what, get over it, you know, get some perspective and, 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 and understand and, 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 you know, have kind of a healthy perspective, hopefully. We lost the full menu at Hash House. A go go was the recent devaluation. <laughs> I know moment of silence for that. I mean, uh, at R the same time, <laughs> you know, we we got to spend a, a pretty much. I mean, I, I had breakfast which were almost like a whole week. It feels like. I think. <laughs> I mm -hmm. don't think the new menu is so bad. Anyway, it's like oh, there's the healthy start, egg omelet or egg whites or whatever's on there, plus the orange juice plus the coffee. So, okay, I don't get my $10 campfire s'more drink. Yes. And I don't get the veggie hash that was a huge portion, yes. but I can yes. still get a good portion. And how many other places in Vegas are going to give you a free breakfast like that? It's not a common thing, especially there. I, I, I would agree. I mean, you're, you're still winning because you're right. I mean, how many other rooms are you getting with a free breakfast? I mean, it, it, that is a rarity in Vegas. And, you know, I think we're, it's easy to focus on what you're losing. I think that's what I think that's interesting. It's like it, it's funny that that seems to be something that people fixate on, not only in miles and points, but also in gambling. You know, you, you're fixated on the losses, right? But uh, you, for, you, for, you forget easily, you know, the wins. You know, and you know, getting getting a, a nice complimentary breakfast as part of your uh, relatively inexpensive room rate in Vegas. I mean, I can't get that anywhere else that I can think of. Mind you, yeah, it's not that the thirty dollar hash house breakfast, but 
honestly, I was kind of feeling bad <laughs> toward the end of that week because I'm like, how much of this food am I not eating? <laughs> it's usually a pretty, <laughs> a pretty big, uh, uh, you know. And I wasn't taking, I wasn't taking leftovers to my room because it was mostly, you know, like mashed potatoes and various other starches that uh, that you know I, I I didn't necessarily want to eat cold later. Um, yeah. But you know, as far as what it replaced, what replaces is, is much more standard, like what you'd get at a Hyatt Regency or something like that, which most days I'm perfectly fine with. Yeah, it's good. And gratitude, yes, a very important part of this game. And for a larger picture, I think miles and points is a great equalizer because many people are under the impression that, oh, travel's only for the rich. Oh, you can only yes. take one trip a year. This is a once in a lifetime vacation. But I'm not some trust fund kid. I didn't inherit some massive sum of money, you know, went through, paid my own way with some student loans uh, in effect as well, and eventually found this hobby. And, oh, wow. So you mean I can creatively spend in certain ways and sign up for accounts and I can make this money and I can travel at low cost or close to no cost? That's interesting. I didn't think that was a thing that was available. The usual yep. thing is, oh, well, we have to save up for this vacation. Yes. Then we yes. don't have much money. Then, oh, maybe next year we can go somewhere else or... I hear people locally, I'm in the Philadelphia area. Oh, well, we'll drive down to the shore. Like yeah. that's their one trip, <laughs> but we're doing lots more on a low budget. I mean, I go back to my, my personal experience, you know, um, you know, when I was growing up, you know, my, so my parents, uh, they owned restaurants. So they, they had, you know, by the way, restaurant business, tough business, and you get no hours off, you know, cause you're your own boss and you know, all that stuff. And so as a family, we, we rarely took vacations, but when we did, we would, we would do just that. We'd hop in the car, we'd go to the shore. And it would be amazing because, you know, that would be our one time, you know, like it would be, you know, a, a day at the beach. And my parents were like, okay, kids, whatever you want, we're going to do it. Whatever you want to buy, whatever you want to eat, let's go. You got today. That's it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what I think that instills in you from a young age is, you know, wow, vacations are amazing because it's, it's uh, the time where you can go, you, ha you, you direct your own course and you can do um, whatever you want and eat whatever you want and do whatever you want. Um, and as, as an adult, you know, you, you grow up, you know, that being your childhood, I was like, oh, I never went on vacation very much. And I'm like, oh, I got to do that more. And, and then, then you suddenly realize, oh, I got to pay for these things out of my pocket. Um, and, and I think then you start thinking about, well, how do I, you know, how do I maximize this? How do I, you know, do this more often and, and, and not have it, not have it be a once in a lifetime or once a year kind of thing. And, 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 and I think you can make some really good choices around, um, you know, how you deploy your resources, um, whether they be points, miles, um, you know, which credit cards you're using, you know, and, and, and also strategically like what you do. I think a good example, I, I, I would imagine um, that, that I think I, I mentioned we might talk about is just even like for instance where we met, you know, San, San Antonio, right? Um, I, I look at things like airfare and I realize, you know, DC to San Antonio, that's not a very competitive route. There's like maybe one or two airlines that fly that nonstop. And, and the tickets were fairly expensive. So I was like, well, I don't know if I want to spend $300 one way to go to San Antonio. So I was like, well, what if I just buy this, you know, less than hundred dollar ticket to Las Vegas camp out there for a couple of days and, and, and enjoy some cheap stays at the Rio and, and earn some Hyatt points and, and take right while I'm at it. And then, and then buy like a $29 ticket to San Antonio from Las Vegas. You know, that's ended up, ended up being what I did and ended up having essentially couple trips, you know, because I ended up having a trip to Vegas before and after our, our San Antonio um, meetup. And in the process, I earned lots of high points, got some free breakfast at Hash House Go Go, and did some other things, which I, I love to do in Vegas. So um, that's like, those are some strategies I think people can do is try to try to be a little bit more creative about how you get places and what you do and, and string trips together so that, you know, um, in, in some cases, you can spend a lot less on airfare, um, especially in places like Vegas, where you know you might be able to get a weekday hotel stay for like thirty bucks or forty bucks. You know, that's that's you know it could be cheaper than than the the difference in airfare. You know, from and, and it was in my case. Yes, and we both did the status matching as I went out there for the win Las Vegas status match yes. that was only on for two months, and I figured, well, I'd have to take a whole separate trip, but since I'm already going to San Antonio. Then I might as well go from San Antonio to Vegas and exactly. get those high nights in. I'm working towards globalist status and the win status match that's looking something like $150 birthday dinner for your birthday month. They're throwing in free play. I think it was about 100 or 150 in free play the last time they did it. And an offer for a cruise if you make two non-consecutive stays 
with win. So there's a lot of opportunity there and a lot of fun in the process too. And for me, since I'm a poker player, okay, well, I'm out there, I'll play poker while I'm out there. And for you, you're doing remote work. So you can just work out of the hotel room and have your that's laptop right. and be good to go. That That's kind of interesting because, you know, you hear about the term like leisure, right? Business leisure kind of combination that that people are doing a lot more. And I think that's a good example of that. And, and I, I think it's becoming more and more common. We ended up both doing this. We ended up being at, and we all both ended up being at Rio at the same time and also at that San Antonio meetup. Of course, we did no <laughs> coordination whatsoever, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, there were, there were a lot of luminaries there, let's say. I ran into past podcast guests, Carissa Rossin, and mm -hmm. we also met people involved with Chicago seminars. Yep. We ran into Shirley Lim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, oh, everybody just shows up. How many globalists are here? How many, so um, many globalists. aspiring globalists are here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, a th that's the interesting thing is, you know, people are going to come up with the same solution to the same problems, you know, <laughs> uh, when, when, it, when it's very obvious. And, you know, and, and Hyatt, of course, made it irresistible because, you know, they had so many promotions going on at the same time, including, you know, an extra $500 a night, uh, 500, sorry, points a night uh, because it's a brand new hotel. And then they had the, this other bonus journeys promotion happening at the same time as they had 20 <laughs> and $30 rates, you know, at the, ho at the hotel plus the free breakfast. So it's like, how can, how can you not go? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It, it might be the best mattress run property for many people. Yes. Whereas some, some were saying like, oh, well, I'll just check into, I don't know, a Hyatt place in Mount Laurel, New Jersey and come back yes. in like five days. But, oh, well, I can get something out of the stay. Yes. And it also had unlimited Wi-Fi. So, of course, I had my phone army with me. I brought my <laughs> mobile phones to run the My Vegas games. Yeah. Going back to that, some people, oh, well, it would take forever. I have to use my main phone. But my solution was, OK, well, what if I just use multiple phones and connect mm -hmm. to Wi-Fi? And you're running multiple games on your computer as well. So yes, I, yes. being able to scale these things really makes a difference. Some people are dismissive of the hobby. Oh, well, it's just one card and one sign-up bonus. Like, oh, okay, well, what if you can get several and several bonuses? Or what if you can use multiple phones to play these games, right? There are, there are a lot of ways to scale up. Yeah, I think I think the problem is is, is a, with a lot of this, it requires a certain amount of, of, of kind of energy and time to get, get it going, right? So like for me, it took it took me to watch your video. It took me to understand because I had been doing my Vegas before. Like I had, but I had I'd never done it in 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 the kind of maximized efficient way that that you kind of um, put out. And then I realized, oh, like I don't even have to like spin at some of these games. I can just like you know have an inactivity kind of thing happening to to earn points for my Vegas. And I, like that was a big um, um, you know light bulb to me when when you pointed that. I was like, oh. You mean I don't actually have to spin the slots on this to actually continue to to get the points that actually I can redeem for things? I'm like, oh, well, that makes it so much easier. <laughs> yeah, it, it would be it would be really hellish to sit there and have to like peck at the screen every so yes. often, right? Yes. But just having it go or using an auto click or app yeah. or you you can use all kinds of things to automate it or exactly. you know hey i'll just glance at it every like half hour or something and it's yeah. it's all right suddenly you know the, the what what it took i mean it's obviously it took me a little bit of time to understand that so i had to watch videos i had to think about okay how can i set this up and in my case i had some i think you would even mention some of these like android emulator softwares you can put on your desktop yeah. computer and i, I can run like three or four of them yeah we have yeah. blue stacks and I can run three or four of them. I can, I can run three or four apps at the same time. And then there's Facebook games too, which I can have in different browser windows, you know, running, you know, <laughs> yep. so, so, you know, you can really have quite a few of these things up and running and, and, and acquiring points very quickly. Similarly, you know, with, with points and miles and credit cards, you know, there are these, all these multipliers and stuff that suddenly, you know, you're not earning one point for every dollar you're spending, you're spending five X, 10 X, you know, there's all, all these other ways to get more points, you know, so you start learning those tricks and, Suddenly, you know, what, you, what seems like a daunting amount of time and effort to get something of worth, of value, you know, suddenly is within reach. But it just requires that extra work and preparation and, and kind of, you know, it's a little bit of, uh, of you know, sweat equity, right, at the beginning. And then, and then suddenly you can hopefully bear some fruit, fruit later on. Yeah, and most things that are going to be valuable are going to take that time and just consider how much time people might put into a hobby that doesn't produce the money, but they like doing. And with this, we're making and saving money and traveling at low cost. So yeah, we put in a little bit of time to learn how it all works. And it's been nice to have helpful online communities as well as Myelonomics yes. was yes. one of the first paid groups that I joined and people were very cool to answer questions when I was just starting out. And I was at Walmart getting money orders and wondering about which cards worked where and how much I can do and all of that, which is largely dead now. 
but a lot of new opportunities have come up. So a lot yep. of helpful people in the community, in myelnomics, and a lot of other groups that I'm in today. And the social part of it is that people share tips with me, I share tips with them, and exactly. everyone wins. It's It's been a pretty good run so far since I've been doing this in 2018. Yeah, I mean, some of the best information you get is just, you know, from your friends and, and from your, you know, various people that you meet on in social media or, or in real life. That's where all the value usually is, you know, and, and, and a lot of times you can like, um, you know, it's it's those conversations you have with people and these podcasts, which I think are just, you know, recorded conversations, right? You really do find a lot of the, the knowledge and, and, and a lot of the value, I think, uh, because, you know, transferring um, transferring that knowledge, you know, uh, in, in kind of this informal, informal method is, is, is so much more valuable and, you know, and, and, and honestly, you're more open, you know, you're more likely to, to provide some, some information that you may not want to have, you know, everybody on the internet be aware of, um, in these type of, 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 uh, venues, because, you know, it's, you're less likely to feel like, you know, someone's going to then, you know, disclose that to a large number of people. And then suddenly that'll kill the deal. It might seem like a lot if you're listening and brand new to this, but I tell people just starting out, usually the play is, okay, well, if you can be responsible with credit, if you have good credit scores already, then consider starting with Chase and the Chase Sapphire Preferred. And I usually recommend that around 60,000 points is a welcome offer, but now it's up to 75,000 points. And okay, just shift your expenses to the new card, get the sign up bonus, and then consider if you want to add more cards right. and with with me i found okay well what can i do to increase my spend so i can get more cards and i found creative ways about reselling about buying groups about money orders as i mentioned now the online gambling so there there are a lot of ways to be successful and yep, some people absolutely. won't do all the advanced stuff for the extra steps but that's okay do what you have time for do what you're comfortable with and of course start small and then scale up well, and I'd focus on the things that you're already spending money on. I know you're a big uh, proponent of, of, of grocery rewards, you know, and, and gas points and those type of things. I mean, many of us have to spend money on gas and groceries anyway. So find a good card that has a good multiplier on those things. You know, if you, if you look at that, what your wallet share is now, of like, what am I spending money on every month? A couple of years ago, we didn't have like the built card, for instance, right? I mean, that's if you're if you have rent payments, you know, that's not a bad thing. Uh, to get and 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 charge your your rent to and and get points for something you're going to spend money on anyway. If you're going to be doing you know remodeling or or any kind of expenses you know fixing your house you know buy buy gift cards um, at your grocery store using for Lowe's and, and Home Depot you know and get a grocery multiplier. I mean there's so many different ways that you can just look at what am I spending money on right now and decide you know instead of doing anything extraordinarily or doing anything outside the norm even you know you could just start by what do I spend money on now and try to maximize that. I think that's probably a good place for a lot of people to start. And many expenses can be put on credit cards that people might not think about, like utilities or daycare or child care services. So those can really add up. Some people might think, oh, $4,000 of spending in 90 days is so much, but probably not. Probably not. These days, you know, if you look at your major expenses and you realize what can be charged, you, you can definitely get, you can get those sign up bonus, you know, minimum spends done pretty damn quick. You know, it's just, you know, it's paying your property taxes or, and you might pay a fee for that, you know, but it's probably worth it to just say, oh, oh, I, I got to I have to spend $4,000. Oh, what's my, what's my property tax bill? Oh, it's pretty high. I guess I got, I could just pay all of that, you know, in, in one file swoop and then done. Yes. I can pay my rent with a multi-use debit card, let's say, and uh, it's a 595 fee in order to use that. And that's right. a lot better than me sending a check in the mail because I can load funds to that multi-use card and use that to pay rent. Of course, losing to the finish line for those familiar. And okay, well, I can pay the 595, but if I'm getting something like a net of 3% back or more, then yes. I'll gladly pay that $5.95 fee. Sometimes buying points and miles at a, a large discount is another way to think about it. You know, you, maybe you're acquiring some of these points, you're spending some money to do it, but you're doing it at a discount in some cases, that's that is still winning. You know, that is still um, getting a better value than than average. You know, sometimes buying points. You know, like that, I wouldn't recommend it, like because it's a very rare situation. Like, there's very few situations where I think purchasing points is a good idea. They do exist. There are those edge cases, right, where you know the discount is is strong enough, where you're able to kind of 
leverage two different discounts or promos at the same time. Suddenly, like something that is just kind of marginal or or or, or reflecting the actual value of, of whatever miles or points you're buying, suddenly it goes from just you're buying stuff at the market rate to oh you're buying stuff above the market rate, and suddenly that that's uh, you know a, a much uh, more favorable situation. Right. So we're being intentional about our purchases. We're treating mm -hmm. this responsibly. And in some ways, I've heard people say treat credit like a debit card in a way where you're only going to make the purchases you can afford. And then you're making sure that money is in the bank. So, OK, well, we're spending the three thousand or four thousand and we're intending to pay that off in full. We're not going and wailing out on designer clothes or going to expensive restaurants we can't afford. We're just making the purchases that make sense. And instead of just using cash or a debit card, we'll put it on credit and then just pay it off. Yep. I mean, it's, it's all money one way or another, right? You know, and whether whether it's miles or points, I mean, it's, it is currency. You know, it is a form of of uh, of money, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And it's good. It is good to treat things that way, too, because I think people also sometimes, you know, Kind of fall into the fallacy of oh yeah I'm I'm uh, this th I'm make uh, you know this I'm saving so much money because you know this I'm getting like three point five cents a point or something like that and people who think in those terms you know I think are are, are often fooling themselves because you know would you really pay you know five thousand dollars for that airfare like would you really pay out of your pocket ten thousand dollars for that hotel stay or and most people wouldn't you know and so I I would say everything's everything whether it be miles and points you know you do treat it like it is a purchase treated like it is money. And, you know, as long as you're making smart level-headed decisions about things, I think you're, you're probably going to be doing okay. Yes. I'd personally never pay like 2000 or $3,000 for a cruise. But when I have a lot of opportunities through yeah. casino status matching and different offers to go on a cruise and the recent one, I had to pay for parking. Yep. So that was Brooklyn. Yep. It was a little bit more expensive, but even at like 35 or 40 a day or whatever it was, well, okay, I got to go on this balcony cruise. I didn't have to pay the base rate. I didn't have to pay taxes and fees. It was just small, gratuity Wi-Fi and parking for this nice cruise. Yes. So it was a really good opportunity to go on that. So there was some cost involved, but that cost is offset by bank account bonuses. It's offset by cash back from certain cards, travel credit redemption, where, okay, well, you could charge something in this card, and then you get an annual travel credit. So that cuts off the, the cruise costs in that way. So a little bit of cost. But compared to people paying the full rate cash money, uh, we have a much better proposition on our hands. I think there's tremendous value out there. I mean, I think there's a lot of offers. Um, there's a lot of even redemption offers. I know that that currently there's a Virgin Voyages um, redemption option out there um, for using your your Virgin Atlantic points, um, which convert uh, to or is part of the Virgin Red program. Those are all great opportunities, and and I, I definitely think that's another area that definitely people should focus some of their attention. I think, I think cruises are, have definitely, it's definitely been an area I pivoted. You know, I, I didn't take quite as many cruises, I think, as I have in the last few years, um, as I did, you know, I, I actually paid for my cruises for by and large before the pandemic, you know, I would, um, you know, go maybe once a year or something like that and, and pay a few hundred dollars, you know, for, you know, five night cruise, seven night cruise or whatever. And then I understood or started realizing that, you know, there really are a lot of um, interesting uh, casino complimentary type options out there, whether they be offers from land-based casinos, like I know that you've, you've definitely made use of, or or some of the actual cruise programs themselves have some very compelling offerings too. So definitely something to keep an eye on and something, someplace where even you can leverage some of your existing miles and points activities. Once again, remembering things such as the, the Virgin Voyages redemptions that are out there for like some, like I just redeemed, I think a hundred and I think what, 15,000 points for five night Caribbean cruise, um, which um, they're also running an Amex bonus, uh, uh, transfer bonus right now, which which kind of effectively brings it down to 89,000 points. Hell of a deal, you know, considering that you know, the cash price uh, for some of those are, are, are pretty extensive. And, and, and that is something where I actually would pay the cash price. You know, I think that where, rather where, you know, maybe some of the other things are a little bit more of uh, a fallacy. I think, I, I think some of what uh, Virgin Voyages charges, I think is, is probably worth the money, especially when you consider they include a lot of things like Wi-Fi and gratuities and um, soft drinks and things like that. Yes. I recently contacted Princess Cruises they were offering to match my MSC cruise offer that I got from Ocean Casino. Princess was just the port fees and taxes. Yes. And they were offering a package, which I thought was interesting. And this was the first time I ever purchased a package on a cruise. Oh, is it the Princess so Plus? One, is that what it was? That yeah, the, the Princess. Yeah. Yes. For um, $80 a day. And they said that 
well, if you don't get the package, you'd have to pay $25 per device in Wi-Fi. Then you'd have to pay gratuities, which are about $20 a day. So you'd be paying $45 Halfway a day there normally. Anyway. Yeah, and the Plus package or the Premier or whatever it happened to be, you get four devices, you get meal upgrades, you get photographs, and you get a lot of other perks while you're on board, including a drink package. Alcoholic mm -hmm. drinks up to $20. It doesn't seem like there's a limit on those. And they also have the specialty coffee drinks, specialty desserts, bottled water, and and much more. So there seems to be some really good value with the Princess Cruise that maybe puts it close to that all-inclusive category that people are looking for yeah. for hotels or maybe other cruises. Yeah, I see a lot of people doing that 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 Princess Plus package. Um, you know, we, we didn't do it this last cruise. I, I actually had my first Princess Cruise earlier this year. And um, we did not do that package, but, you know, we did have a little bit of FOMO because, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of things we ended up spending money on anyway. Um, and, and, you know, we could have potentially ha made use of that package, um, as you said, because it, it's a pretty compelling, you know, it's a very compelling bundle that they put together. A lot of times the cruise bundles are a little hit or miss. I feel like the princess plus is definitely a much more compelling package than most cruise lines have out there because they're putting together a lot of stuff that you actually will use. Right. And because that's the problem is a lot of times these bundles are things like, oh, get, you know, like extra, you know, private surf simulator time or, you know, get, you know, preferred seating, you know, on the second balcony. I'm like, why do you want to sit there anyway? It's, it's stuff that you were like, you know, great. I guess it's nice to have an exclusive area to have breakfast in or something. But I mean, like. I, I can just go to the dining room or the buffet. Are these things you're actually going to use where, you know, number one, everyone's going to have to pay gratuities. Everyone's going to, you know, probably use Wi-Fi or, or, or some kind of beverage package. So, so suddenly, you know, there, there's some, there's some, not all packages are created evil, e equal is, is I guess what my point is, is that some cruise lines have very, very compelling packages and others are like, yeah, that, that's a, not a great, like, I mean, I, my, my, I'm, I'm comparing it to instance for like the key, which is another package they have on royal caribbean which includes like early boarding and wi-fi and but not not beverages um it includes like a free lunch on the embarkation day only but you're but you're paying for that package every day which is like okay i'm getting something at the very beginning i'm getting something at the end and I'm, the only thing i'm getting through the whole cruise is uh i get extra time on the surfing simulator and the rock climbing <laughs> wall and 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 wi-fi i'm like oh it's not very compelling, Royal Caribbean. Maybe that's a that's they probably need to take a a, a page from the uh, the Princess Playbook because I think the Princess Plus package definitely is something. Ooh, a lot of a lot of alliteration there. That's good. Yeah, play from the Princess Playbook and package. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize I was doing that, but um, yeah, I, I I'm glad you got that package. I think a lot of people do get the package, and I think they're generally fairly happy. Very pleased with the pleasant package. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and the winds continue, all yes. these offers. So so many offers that last month it was just really, really packed. And personally, I like to leave about two or three days between trips to catch up on things locally, to do laundry and not be rushing. But there were just so many offers and so many opportunities. My challenge is trying to figure out how do I stretch my vacation days and take all these cruises that I have access to? Because uh, there's so many of them. And that's a good problem to have, mind you. I'm yeah. glad that that's a problem that I have, not and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, but for a first world problem. <laughs> absolutely, first world problem. Flip side of that, you know, I think um, uh, we just had um, a pretty good cruiser on our, our podcast uh, this this weekend. It's, it's actually the episode's it's up there right now. Um, Deb Schroeder, and in, in, you know, her point of advice, uh, I think, in that podcast uh, with with that particular guest was, and I and I would I would reiterate this here is 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 look for those offers and take advantage of them now people are being generous with these things like cruise offers at land-based casinos but you know what people are also they're also hitting these deals pretty hard like i know there are people who are the travel hackers out there they are they're 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 taking the offers they're they're redeeming them and you know corporations are not dumb they're they're going to realize that you know if they're not getting the return on some of these things um that they're expecting they're not going to be here um in the future and my guess is, is that the economics of some of this with cruising getting more expensive and more people utilizing some of the, you know, offers that are out there, the marketing opportunities. Um, to me, I do feel like her advice is wise in that if you see something that is doable for you um, with one of these cruise offers, make it happen. Do it. Book it. You know, what's the worst that's going to happen? You might cancel it and you might not go and, and you'll, you'll just get refunded your, your taxes and fees. Yes, get in the game, get out there and yeah, book these things, book the offers or um, just don't 
wait and wait and wait. Some people, oh, well, maybe it'll be around six months. Maybe it'll be around eight months. But yeah, maybe not. Maybe it just dies. And even the Ocean Casino Atlantic City, they devalued the match in a certain way because now you can only do it every every one and a half years. Yep. But it used to be every year. Although it is the third one that I went on. But yeah, maybe maybe it just dies into the next year and I won't be able to do that match again. And some people just completely missed out on it. Yeah, I mean, the worst feeling you have is you when you have the opportunity to do something and it goes away because it devalues or or they they cancel it or they do something that's unplanned. That's a horrible feeling. I would say don't don't feel that way. Take the wins, as Justin probably would say, and you know book it, <laughs> yep. uh, book it when you can. I when I saw that Virgin Voyages uh, deal come around uh, last year, I was very sad that I didn't take advantage of it. So when I saw it come back this year, I was like, Ugh. day one, I I purchased it. And I think that's a good way. And, and the reason why I did that, because, you know, I had felt the loss. I'm like, damn, I that was a deal I would have done. I would have liked to have done it. I missed out on the opportunity. So don't have the FOMO. Go ahead and go ahead and 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 try things, you know, especially things on cruising, especially if you're on the fence, you know, give it a shot. You know, if you've never done a cruise before, I would say go ahead and 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 try it if you can if you can get one of these. Uh, and, and it's not that hard, you know. I think there's so many different ways, whether it be leveraging. Um, the Wyndham business card or, or getting founders club or, you know, doing any, any, you know, doing various tier matches at casinos or there, or even just taking a regular cruise and, and, and doing a little bit of gambling and understanding how, how you can accrue points and understanding the various cruise loyalty programs. You know, there's, there's so many different avenues, um, especially on the cruise side, which I think are very lucrative that, that people should probably pay attention. And I don't think it's going to get better. I think we're at a, a good point right now where there's lots of opportunities. I often wonder, and, and unfortunately, I mean, I'm, I'm probably part of the problem because I'm, I'm helping to publicize that these things are great. <laughs> um, and, and obviously that's not going <laughs> to, doesn't necessarily help the ecosystem because the more people who take advantage of this, the, the quicker these, you know, deals kind of die. But uh, I would say while the going's good, I, I, you know, I'd say get going. Yeah. It's an interesting thing. Cause every so often, oh, well, if it's so easy, why would everybody do it? But a lot of people don't do it. I, a I lot of people, people very, very, very easy, actionable tips. Like when I see a bank account bonus, that's something like 400 or 500 for connecting direct deposit and just making one direct deposit. Like I chat with poker dealers all the time and some might mention like, oh, you know, money's been rough or, oh, I got back from vacation. Now I'm broke, whatever. It's like, oh, well, you know what? Truist is offering a bonus right now. And if you open a checking account with them and move your direct deposit over, they're paying $500 and then they just don't do it. Yeah. Or I'll hear, yeah. you know, I'll see them a few months and like, oh, I should really get started. I should really get started. And some it's like years later, oh, I should get started. I should get yeah. going. And like, yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm happy to help you. Look, I'll help you. You use some links. I'll make something out of it. It's okay. It's fine. And, you know, you've been dealing with me poker. You're nice to me at the tables. It's cool. I can help in other ways. It's all right most people for whatever reason, you know, if it requires any kind of difficulty, if you have to make a phone call or if you have to, you know, exert a little bit of effort, they don't want to do it. It does require some amount of desire and effort to do a lot of these things. Right. And I try to think of some deals from an hourly perspective in that, okay, well, yeah, it's a little bit of an effort making a phone call or, oh, I have to take a five minute detour to get to this store, but what can I expect to gain by yes. making this stop? Like this week at Giant, for instance, they're giving 10 times choice points on Airbnb gift cards. So if I buy a $400 Airbnb gift card for personal use, for example, that's going to allow me to get 25 gallons worth of gas. Yep. And how much effort or time or what would I need to do to make that money to pay for that 25 gallons worth of gas? But if I already had an Airbnb stay coming up, and it just is an extra step to stop at a store and to use the gift card to pay versus a credit card. Well, that's going to be a great return on my money. Yeah, I, I, I like to consider that. That's something I would call accelerated spending where, again, you're, it's money you're probably going to spend anyway. So why not maybe do it at an advantageous time, like when there's a gro grocery point uh, promotion going on um, at, at your grocery store? You know, there's certain gift cards if I see that are on promo like that, like an Uber gift card or a Lowe's gift card or, a, you know, Chick-fil-A gift card or, you know, there's a whole bunch of these Amazon gift card, any of these kind of gift cards where it's so easy to just, you know, redeem. I, th I think one of the things they offer such lucrative promos, right, because they're kind of counting on you to lose the gift card or forget to use it or stick it in a sock drawer. And, and while they're obviously it's sitting there, you know, they're making their money off of, uh, you know, this money that they're holding on to. Um, so they're counting on breakage. But, you know, there's a there's quite a few of those uh, gift cards out there that I know that I will use. And some of them actually make it very easy because, you know, like if it's an Amazon gift card or Chick-fil-A card or, 
you know, some of these other uh, uh, gift cards where you can just kind of add it to your digital balance. I, I love to do those because I'll just buy them. I'll redeem them immediately, like add them to my like my Amazon balance or my Chick-fil-A card balance or something. And, and there's very little or no chance of breakage or somebody, you know, hacking or, or doing something bad or nefarious and like take stealing the balance off that card because it's already part of a, a digital balance somewhere else. I've already redeemed it. Yeah, Uber is really good for that, especially with the American Express credits that I have. It's like, okay, well, if I have $40 a month in Uber credits and I put these gift cards in there to cover a little bit of overage, then that's great. Yep, you can or, or, or Uber Eats, right? You know, between Uber and Uber Eats, you know, I, I wouldn't say I use Uber all the time. I, quite, quite honestly, it's like always when I'm in Vegas, you know, that's where I'm using all my Uber credits, it seems lately. Yeah, those are all great ideas. Uh, and um, and again, I think, you know, th those are things that are easy, right? So they shouldn't, they should, nobody should have a problem with doing these type of things. It's just maybe a little bit of time to understand your grocery um, promos and, and and the programs and understand when to use the gas credits and when they expire and, and make sure everything's working okay. Uh, once you've got all that figured out, it's it's so easy, you know, and just make it part of your daily routine. Yeah, Stephen Pepper doing great work on the website gcgalore.com, like gift card galore.com, gcgalore.com, keeping track of the deals, doctor of credit, another great resource. So People are figuring it out. It's not like I'm getting the Sunday paper and looking through the flyer all the time and trying to find little things here or there. It's that the community exists online and you could find that information. Yeah, that Sunday, you know, it used to be that would be something I would do, right? You know, as kind of a frugal shopper, I, I, I'd look at my Sunday circulars and, you know, you, you, now now you're right. Now you go online and you look at the, these various sites because they're, they're the equivalent of the Sunday circular because you don't get that paper anymore, right? You don't get you don't get the uh, the the advertisements um, sent to you uh, directly. You have to search them out, and oftentimes in a digital format. Yeah, it used to be so good at Giant in Pennsylvania when they were bonusing the sports betting gift cards and casino gift cards. They were giving five times points on that, and the earnings were uncapped. So I had so many grocery rewards that it didn't even matter. I had points that were going to expire and it was like a thousand or 2000 points that were expiring. And I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do with these rewards? So I stocked an up embarrassment on... of riches is what I like to say in those situations. <laughs> an embarrassment I of stocked riches. Up, stocked up on um, printer paper, Q-tips, laundry detergent, bathroom supplies. I have a bunch of Philadelphia Phillies t-shirts because they sell them at Giant. And I was eating sushi and Chinese food. Yeah. So, sounds like a episode of like uh, what is that? Uh, what, what's that? What's the the couponing show? Supermarkets. Oh, well, oh, extreme. Extreme couponing. Extreme couponing is what it sounds like. Ah, but, but but we put them to shame because we just get whatever and uh, get a lot more than they. Yes. Do. Yes. But you know, and and in a way, it's, it's just different kinds of that kind of extreme couponing mentality, right? It's just you know, some people, some people just you know they they clip out a few coupons and they, they save a few bucks. Some people take it to to another level. I would say, Justin, you are one of those people who take it to another level. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and, and your your um, coupon clippings, some critics of the hobby, oh, it sounds like clipping coupons. It's like, okay, but coupon clipping isn't getting me complimentary cruises and Las Vegas trips and many other places, uh, international travel that you've gone on as well. Well, I, I don't, and, and you know, that's the thing is like, why, why is coupon clipping a derogatory thing? I, I, I think coupon clipping is, is a smart activity. I think it's, it, it, and I don't think it's, it's, it's fake. I think. People who want to be frugal and people who want to make the most of their dollar, I mean, they, they do coupon. It, it shouldn't be a negative. You know, I think I think that's part of being a smart shopper, part, part of being informed is understanding, you know, what's out there. It's not it's not about being cheap. You know, it's it's a, it's just about, you know, let's make better use of, of the this hard earned money that I work for. You know, uh, so I, I, I think maybe some people take coupon clipping as a as a negative. I, I consider badge of honor because I think it's it's something where. You know, it's not about, you know, being cheap and it's not about uh, a tr it's a, it's a, just about utilizing your resources and, and utilizing the money that, that you work very hard for in, in the best way possible. Yeah, I've had some run ins with the coupon clippers before in online groups that didn't like me because I said, like, look, well, why focus on things like getting a dollar off of three jars of mayonnaise <laughs> when you can instead just get MasterCard gift yes. cards and use those yes. and you're getting three X and you're able to get whatever you want it used to be a thing. And I would hear, oh, that sounds like too much effort. And I'm thinking like, wait a second, you guys are running all these different apps and looking through these flyers and trying to source all these coupons and stack things. And like, OK, I'm putting an effort, but I think I'm getting a lot more out of the effort that I'm putting yeah. in and I'm able to just get whatever I want. 
and there were like 65 people in the comment section. Someone posted, oh, I got the mayonnaise and it said it was going to expire in November or whatever it was. And it was like, oh, now it's expired. And they're posting like this spoiled mayonnaise in October and <laughs> all these people, oh, call corporate, call customer service, bring it back to the store. Like all it's like you guys are focused on the wrong thing. Yes, I will. I will say that because, you know, I think some people who do the extreme couponing. They just end up getting mass quantities of stuff they're never going to use. Right. And, and even if they're getting it for negative cost or they're getting it for very low cost, I mean, it's still, it's, it's, it's overconsumption of something you really don't need. And, and I think it's kind of, in many cases, they're, they're meeting a need, you know, like it, it makes them feel better, you know, that they're kind of storing their nuts for the winter or whatever um, and have their stockpile, you know, of like, you know, 500 rolls of toilet paper and, 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 you know, more uh, glass cleaner than they could use in five lifetimes. But at the same time, you know, like, yeah, some other people just choose to use their resources differently. And I think in our case, I, I told you kind of my story. It'll, I, I've always loved to travel. I've always felt like I didn't do enough of it as a kid and I'm making up for lost time. And um, that's how I, that's how I'm, you know, kind of um, putting away my my nuts for the winter is, is, is in miles and points so that I can, you know, save up for that next trip and, and do it, you know, in a, in a level of style and comfort. And, and you know, and I'm like with everyone else. I, I do love free stuff, you know, so I, I like it when, you know, hotel gives me free breakfast or, uh, you know, gives me lounge access so I can have, you know, f free food and free drinks and things. Um, or when an airline gives me, you know, uh, you know, great meals and, and great service and, and, and other things. So I like those things and um, I, I desire them and I want to do them more. Yeah, I was hoping they would level up, but but they didn't do that. So <laughs> we just have to work on ourselves and try yeah. to maybe recruit other people in the hobby or network with people already in the game. You know, it's a lot of the activities are similar, but, you know, I think people's motivations are very different. You know, I, I think some people get much more for me personally. I, I, I find as I get older, I have too much junk already. So acquiring more material things is becoming less and less important to me, you know? Like my problem is I have too much crap. I have to get rid of it at some point or, you know, declutter or, 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 you know, basically do a Marie Kondo. I, I don't feel like um, experiences, travel, those type of things. I, I, I don't feel like those are wasteful because those memories, those, those trips, those being able to talk to somebody about maybe where they're from or where they lived or, you know, where they had a wonderful trip. I mean, those are all things that I think enrich my life and, and, and make me, you know, very happy, which I think um, is hopefully what other people do as well. That's why I definitely suggest people um, make time for, for travel and, and, and make time to see those places and, and do those things, right? Because I think that's going to ultimately be more meaningful and more, um, you know, give you more joy than, you know, 500 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, or both. Both is always fun. Or, or you could have 500 thing. rolls of toilet paper and go <laughs> traveling. I guess that's true. You could, you could do yeah. that. And it's it's nice. It's really been life changing because a lot of these trips I've gone on, I never would have paid for or they would have been some trips that I would have paid for anyway. But now I didn't have to pay for them like conferences, conventions I go to where normally I would be spending like 100, 150 a night. But now, oh, I can just use those Hyatt points. So I'll go stay there. And it's also improved the quality of the travel, too, as you mentioned, with good service on flights, like getting seat upgrades, getting room upgrades in hotels having better quality food rather than just, um, oh, well, I'm just going to go to the grocery store and eat salad for a week. You know, it's like, oh, well, I can use my comps at these restaurants. It's giving me free breakfast and, and much more. It's nice to have options, right? It's nice to have options. It's nice to be able to say, oh, wow, that that cash rate at that hotel is, is crazy expensive, but they have points uh, rooms available. Let me use my points. Or, oh, boy, the points, you know, rate at this hotel is very high. Like, let me pay cash. It's it's nice to have the option uh, and and to feel like you know you 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 can try to optimize um, where you where you need to. All right, very good. We're coming up on about an hour here, so if you'd like to promote yourself, promote your podcast, where people can find you online. Tom Kim, you know you can uh, find me um, on uh, very socials uh, uh, as Thomas Kim. Although I, I think if you search for me as Thomas Kim, you're gonna find that there's lots of Thomas Kims in the world. So uh, probably the easiest way to find me is, is to find my podcast. Uh, we're on the Myelonomics uh, network. Uh, we do uh, put out a podcast uh, about, about two a month. Um, you can find us on Spotify and um, Apple, I, uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, and uh, if you are part of the Myelonomics uh, network, you know, again, that's a paid um, website and uh, a Patreon uh, a group that um, has lots of great content. Um, they also have their own uh, paid podcast as well, Sam and, and, and Robert, who, who run that. Amazing community, lots of people who are 
very advanced in this hobby uh, and have all kinds of advice on uh, earning and using miles uh, and points. So I think it's probably worth checking out, um, especially if you're ready to kind of level up, as, as Justin would say, and, and and learn more. So definitely look for our, our podcast, which is uh, often at times available on, on, I, on Apple Podcasts for no fee. Um, it's called Travel Stories. And again, part of, uh, if you look up Milonomics, uh, M-I-L-E-O-N-M-I-C-S, I guess, Milonomics? Uh, oh, Milonomics. Milonomics. I'm, I'm horrible about this. I should know this better. <laughs> Justin Justin knows this better than I do. But um, definitely check out that that podcast, Milonomics. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, we, we have, uh, again, a, a twice monthly show, uh, both Trevor Mountcastle and myself, we talk about miles and points. So we talk about our trips. We have lots of guests uh, uh, on, uh, hopefully Justin in the near future. And um, we'll, uh, you know, I think it's just a, a great kind of place just to hear some some thoughts, some good conversation. Um, and, and maybe learn a thing or two. Yes, thanks. I was on the podcast before on one of the other podcasts on the network, but would be happy to come on again on yours. So yes, good chatting and a very quick conversation here. The time flew by. Yeah, it was it was great, Justin. It was it was good having a conversation. It was good good uh, reminiscing about various things. And um, happy happy to have uh, happy to be on your podcast. We'll, we'll happy to do it any other time. Yeah, thanks. And thanks for the breakfast in Las oh, you're Vegas. Welcome. We're now officially. Well, thank, thank you, Hyatt Globalist, I should say. House, the, the, last, <laughs> <laughs> the last shot at the full yes. menu, RIP. You, we're, we're lucky to be one of the few globalists that, that managed, to, uh, uh, and quite a few breakfasts at that. I think we, we, we managed to get quite the complimentary tab uh, on behalf of Hyatt uh, Globalist program uh, in Las Vegas. So I, think, <laughs> I think we did a good job. Yeah, there, there is a meme floating around. It has this uh, elderly woman in a walker. It says, I could order anything off the breakfast menu at Hash House. And then there's a woman on the right that says, sure, Grandma, let's get you to bed. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a, it was definitely a bit of a dream. Uh, uh, and it was too, too good to be true, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and the servers, I think, made out. And some of the post analysis, they were saying that the servers got tips based on how big the orders yes. were. So when everybody was coming in for their like $70 breakfast, the, the servers were really making out on that. I guess they had a really good uh, March and, and April and a little bit of May, you know, they had a, they had a, they had a really <laughs> good, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess it wouldn't be, have been a bad time to be a server at Hash House. Yeah. It's like, oh, why does he keep recommending that specialty coffee? I just said I wanted regular. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, those were sweet coffees too. They, they put plenty of sugar in those coffees. <laughs> They're like dessert coffees. All right. Thanks oh, you're a lot. Welcome. Have a great All day. All right. Anytime, Justin. It was a pleasure. Uh, ho hope to see you soon. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for future episodes. Visit hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me. Find me on social media, read select episode transcripts, schedule a free consultation, and use referral links to support my efforts. Find the show on many podcast platforms and YouTube where you can find bonus videos. Supporting me with monthly donations on Subscribestar will give you special perks including a custom podcast episode, questions answered by upcoming guests, and monthly private one-on-one -on -one conversations delving into more advanced topics I don't openly discuss at length in podcast episodes. Visit meetup.com slash Philly Miles and Points to learn about the monthly Greater Philadelphia Travel Credit Miles and Points meetups I host in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. I hope to see you in person at a future event. Find a link in the show notes. I'll be speaking at multiple events in 2024, including the October Chicago Seminars event at the Holiday Inn in Elk Grove Village and the Miles Points and Gambling event Zorkfest, November 2024 in Las Vegas. I hope to see you in person at these events. Ticket sales are live. Listen to my other podcast, the Stoic Solutions Podcast, found at stoicsolutionspodcast.com. My podcast guests and I offer practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient tradition of Stoic philosophy from Greece and Rome. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Travel at low cost with the points and miles, credit card rewards, bring the smiles, many adventures, tales to be told, make and save money, the world will unfold. Fight the war on happiness, pick up the gold. Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast breaks the mold.